This episode of the Memory Palace is brought to you by Article. We are big fans of Article here at the Memory Palace. This room of the palace, um, the ballroom where I'm sitting right now, um, it's palatial, trust me, um, is lit beautifully uh, by a legit beautiful lamp from Article. This stuff is of extraordinarily high quality. Um, it is truly lovely furniture that's influenced by you know mid-century modern and Scandinavian styles. Um, I have a feeling you're really gonna like it. If you've never checked it out before, you know, summer and warmer weather is right around the corner here in the Northern Hemisphere. And they really have fantastic outdoor furniture. It's totally worth checking out. Go to article.com and take a look. The stuff looks great and it is made with all these outdoor friendly materials like teak and acacia wood and granite and galvanized steel and rattan. And it comes to you with a flat delivery fee of $49, regardless of what you're buying and how big the order is. So go to www.article.com slash memory palace and get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. That is www.article.com slash memory palace. Go check it out. The Memory Palace is brought to you by Rate Marketplace. If you're a homeowner, did you know it takes just minutes to see if you're eligible to save up to $4,000 a year? Rate Marketplace is a home financing engine that uses a fast and easy online process. With Rate Marketplace, you can drop the paperwork and in a few minutes get a custom mortgage solution from your phone or computer. If you want to get started and see your savings at ratemarketplace.com slash memory palace. That's ratemarketplace.com slash memory palace. They are an equal housing lender. MLS number 1137890. This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate DeMeo. There must have been a moment when William Walker was running through the jungle, his feet blistered, his clothes soaked through with sweat, his face still bleeding from that shootout at the abandoned lumber camp a few miles back along the river. There must have been a moment as the British Navy and the Honduran Army closed in, when William Walker marveled at the life that had brought him there. He was born in Tennessee in 1824, and young William was small and precocious. He graduated summa cum laude from the University of Nashville. He was 14 years old. He spent 15 and 16 studying medicine in Scotland, in Sweden, in Germany, and France. By 19, he was a Philadelphia doctor with a degree from Penn. A couple of years later, he had a law degree. Soon after that, the doctor turned lawyer, turned journalist. He started a paper in New Orleans before heading out to San Francisco, where he worked as a reporter. And where he decided, he was going to start his own country. Now, this was sort of the thing to do in the early 1850s. The newspapers, like Walker's New Orleans Crescent, were filled with riveting stories of small groups of Americans landing on some beach on some Caribbean island and trying to take over. They were called filibusters, from a Spanish word for pirate. And yeah, that's where the political term comes from. Filibustering is like hijacking the proceedings of the Senate or Congress. So these American filibusters would show up in Cuba it was often Cuba, and try to get the locals riled up enough to overthrow their government. And yes, this is a whole lot like what the U.S. and the CIA were doing for much of the 20th century, which is unpleasant enough, but in the middle of the 19th century, these filibusters were out to bring slavery to these free countries. All of those awkward and awful compromises in the middle of the 19th century that managed to fend off the Civil War for a while locked Washington's balance of power into place. But if slavery was legal below an imaginary line in a map, suddenly the notion of a senator from the great state of Cuba, or Costa Rica, casting a deciding vote, became an obsession for some in the South. So these filibusters kept launching these attacks, and they kept failing spectacularly. They'd get their men killed, they'd get themselves killed, they'd hightail it back to the United States and get arrested and William Walker thought this sounded awesome. And William Walker, five foot two, a buck 20, not even 30 years old, doctor, lawyer, writer, no military experience, thought he was just the man to get it right. And it turned out he kind of was. In October of 1853, Walker and 44 other men invaded Mexico. They walked into the capital of Baja, California with guns and found out that people didn't really have guns there. And so Walker declared himself the president of his own country, complete with slavery. But President Walker pressed his luck. He moved the capital to Ensenada, christened the new bigger country, the Republic of Sonora. 
And then the Mexican government, which had plenty of guns, decided it had had enough. And the tiny man and his tiny army were on their way back to San Francisco. Walker was arrested on the spot. He had clearly broken U.S. federal law. You couldn't just go and take over other countries. But a stacked pro-slavery, pro-filibustering jury disagreed and acquitted him after deliberating for eight minutes. And Walker was back in business. The next spring, he and 56 men set sail for Nicaragua. And they stepped off the boat and stepped into a civil war. Everyone wanted a piece of the country. Britain, the United States, the shipping magnate Cornelius Vanderbilt, you know, the Nicaraguans. They all wanted to control a shipping route from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And it was a chaotic situation. And when the smoke cleared, William Walker of Tennessee was the president of Nicaragua. And he made slavery legal. But just like in Mexico, Walker pushed his luck. He launched an invasion of Costa Rica. And Cornelius Vanderbilt, who wasn't going to let this Nashville Napoleon screw things up with his shipping business, armed the surrounding countries. And before long, Walker was on his way back to the United States to be arrested and acquitted again. And that brings us back to the jungle. The story can only end one way. If you keep attacking foreign countries with a few dozen dudes, eventually your luck is going to run out. And in 1860, when Walker was running through the Honduran jungle, his final filibustering adventure coming apart at the seams. He must have known it. The British were right on his trail. He had nearly gotten killed by Hondurans before escaping into the woods. Back at home, the New York Times editorial board was rooting against him, writing, the people of this country are heartily sick of Walker and his imbecile and criminal attempts to play the hero. But he also must have known, as he finally surrendered to the British, as they turned him over to the Honduran authorities, as they placed him up against a wall and blindfolded him, as the firing squad raised the rifles, that the folks back at home in Nashville would call little William Walker a hero.